This morning's Parsha Mitzora speaks to the interconnectedness of our physical, spiritual, and communal well-being. The portion is often challenging and enigmatic, and yet it offer, also offers profound insights into the nature of affliction, the power of words, and the enduring struggle against prejudice and persecution. At its core, Mitsura addresses the affliction of tzara'at, a mysterious skin disease that manifests as a physical ailment but carries profound spiritual implications. While tzara'at is often understood as a consequence of moral transgression, our sages often find a spiritual, deeper interpretation one that links the affliction to the destructive power of gossip, slander, and the misuse of words. The best proof that Mitsura was never meant to really be merely about medicine is found in the verse, chapter 14, verse 13. Ki tavo el eretz kana'an asher ni noten lachem. When you enter the land of kana'an that I give to you as a possession, and I inflict an eruptive plague upon the house in the land you possess. In such a house, the Torah tells us that the walls turn colors and must be torn down. And the question, of course, becomes, how can a house have tzara'at? The rabbis base their interpretation on a pun of the word mitzora, motzi ra, which means to bring out or to bring forth evil, particularly in words, speaking falsehood and evil about people such that one fosters distrust, prejudice, and hatred. That is indeed a sickness, a disease which can infect all who live in or enter such a house. No, the walls don't literally change colors, but a sick environment like this can certainly color the view of anyone living there. What goes on in the homes of extremists, like the members of Hamas, the leadership of Iran, or even Ben Gvir and Smotrich? What do children learn where parents speak of killing those who are different than others? What happens when generations of children have been infected with moral leprosy that allows them to destroy life without conscience or caring. In the Mishnah, Rabbi Yishmael teaches the tongue and the ear and the eye, everyone who uses them for forbidden purposes, they dig a pit for themselves. Here Rabbi Yishmael underscores the profound impact of our words and actions emphasizing the need for mindfulness and ethical conduct in our speech. Today, the destructive power of words remain as potent as ever, manifesting not only in interpersonal conflicts, but also in the insidious rise of prejudice, bigotry, and anti-Semitism that we are experiencing the world over and here at home in Toronto. We witness the weaponization of language, the spread of misinformation, and the perpetuation of harmful stereotypes, all of which contribute to the erosion of trust, empathy, and community solidarity. In contemplating the lessons of Mitsura, we are called upon to confront the destructive power of gossip and slander in our own lives, to recognize the ways in which our words can wound, divide, and diminish the humanity of others. We are reminded of the importance of ethical speech, of using our words to uplift, to inspire, and to build bridges of understanding. Moreover, as we grapple with the tensions and conflicts in the Middle East, particularly the recent hostilities, the war between Israel and Hamas, and most recently with Iran, the lessons of Mitsura seem to me to take on 
added significance. We are reminded of the corrosive effects of hatred and intolerance, of the need to confront prejudice and injustice with courage and conviction. In his commentary on the Torah, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, Zichronot Livracha, reflects on the enduring revelance of Mitzorah in our modern world. He writes, the Mitzorah reminds us that there are consequences to our actions, that words can wound and deeply, can wound as deeply as any physical blow, and that the path to healing begins with introspection, repentance, and reconciliation. As we continue to stand in solidarity with the people of Israel and all those affected by the conflict and persecution, we reaffirm our commitment to the values of justice, compassion, and peace. We strive to be agents of healing and reconciliation, using our words and our actions to build a world of dignity, equality, and mutual respect for all. Moreover, as we prepare to tell the story of the Exodus, we are called upon to confront the enduring reality of oppression and injustice in our world. The recent conflicts and tensions serve as a stark reminder of the ongoing struggle for freedom, dignity, and human rights, first and foremost for our own people, and beyond that, for all people. As we gather around the Seder table this week, we're mindful of the lessons of this Parsha and the imperative to confront hatred and tolerance and intolerance. The path to healing, continues Rabbi Sachs, begins with introspection, repentance, and reconciliation. In his commentary in the Haggadah, he reflects on the significance of Passover as a celebration of freedom and responsibility. Freedom without leads to anarchy and responsibility without freedom. Freedom without responsibility leads to anarchy and responsibility without freedom is a form of tyranny. Passover teaches us that true freedom is the ability to choose the good to embrace our responsibilities to one another and to the world. Several decades ago, within the walls of a house at 263 Prison Gracht in Amsterdam, there was no motzira, no evil, no plague of negativism or negation. Within those walls, a young girl named Anne Frank experienced kindness and goodness. In this house, Miep and, and Hank Van Satten and Ellie Vossen and Kraler and Kupis hid the Franks in the Van Dans and protected them and fed them and fostered hope in a young girl such that she could write these immortal words. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart I simply can't build my hopes on a foundation of confusion, misery, and death. I see the world gradually being turned into a wilderness. I hear the approaching thunder. I can feel the suffering of millions. And yet, if I look up into the heavens, I think it will all come out right one of these days. That cruelty will end and that peace and tranquility will return again. Anne's words remind us of what can be accomplished within the walls of a good home and with words, with words of kindness and hope. As we retell the story of Yitziat Mitzrayim, as we retell the story of the Exodus and partake in the rituals of the Seder, we renew our commitment to these values, the values of justice, compassion, and we pray for peace. May Pesach be a time of renewal and redemption, a time of healing and of hope for all humanity. May we emerge from this season of liberation with hearts open to the possibilities of a brighter future for ourselves, for Israel, for the world, for generations to come. Amen.